All right, Jeff Parm, it's a pleasure to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress in Las Vegas to talk private 5G. It's been really a focal point of the show. And uh, before we get into the specific work that Nokia and NTT are doing together, curious to get some observations from you around market dynamics. I guess high level private 5G has been a little tricky because the customers need something that's highly customized, bespoke for their particular needs, their particular environment. But for the folks selling private 5G, you want something that's replicable, that's scalable. So. Take me through kind of your uh, sense of the, the dynamics in the market, and then let's talk about this uh, joint go-to-market partnership that you have. Jeff? Yeah, hey, thanks a lot, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, cities are becoming uh, more connected and uh, smarter than ever before, which means that they're also generating more data than ever before, right? And so, therefore, um, organizations need someone to handle that complexity and all of that information that's coming in. Um, that's why this combination and, and partnership between Nokia and NTT is, is so important, where we're leveraging the experience that Nokia has in deploying large-scale networks with uh, the ex expertise that NTT data has uh, in integrating complex IT and, and OT systems and, and applications. And uh, most recently, um, we just entered into a partnership with the city of Brownsville, Texas, um, where we will be delivering this uh, you know, cutting edge 5G technology and, and private wireless system to help address their needs as well as be able to scale for uh, future needs as well. All right, very good. Parm, what's your point of view on just sort of a broader market picture here? Yeah, so one of NTT's real core values in bringing a, a private network solution is we bring it as a managed service provider that we are the partner for our enterprise clients, uh, like City of Brownsville. And we pull together you know, the entire ecosystem, broad ecosystem of what's needed for an end-to-end -end solution to deliver real outcomes, like secure networking, control, and, and, and ability to uh, support the next generation of use cases, but more importantly, also the basic capability of connectivity that smart cities are looking for. So we layer on that, those capabilities with our solutions end to end. We have a platform called Smart World that is going to be delivering all the outcomes on top of the connectivity we're bringing with our engineering SI resources, as well as our operational resources. So I think, to your point, you know, working with partnership and partnership with Nokia, um, Cisco as well, we pull together the entire ecosystem of devices and solutions that these cities are needing. And I think to your point, you know, they have a very unique requirement. They need to understand how, you know, uplink for secure computer vision applications. They need networks that are, in this scenario, they're close to the border. They need that reliable connectivity for police enforcement. So what we're really doing here is, you know, leveraging the expertise of Nokia, NTT, bringing the entire solution together and all the solutions. So I think to your point, there's that balance that it still has to be a very CIO friendly network um, that when I say CIO friendly, it means that ease of integration into the enterprise. So there's a, not like a kind of more a public network that's standardized for mass uh, services. And one of the other challenges, and I think a lot of the operators have, is meeting the operational needs of the city. That's SLAs, they want reliability, especially if they're going to be using these networks for their mission critical applications. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about Brownsville. That's a, a really interesting project. Uh, in the not too uh, distant past, NTIA designated Brownsville, Texas, one of the worst connected cities in the country, but that's all changing based on the work you all are doing together. So maybe you can just sort of take us through some of the technical aspects of the deployment and then talk us through how that makes the city easier to manage for the municipal government and then how do those benefits accrue to the residents? Yeah, so Brownsville is a very interesting you know, city. If it's going to be a great case study, I think, at one point, and I'm a true believer. Uh, culturally, it's it's you know they're very entrepreneurial. So if you you know if you look at what's happening with uh, Spaceport, SpaceX, uh, SpaceX headquarters coming in, um, the innovation that's coming into the city through those uh, client those uh, you know tenants there. The largest LNG port in the U.S. It's sitting right there. All that energy and trend, you know, is going out. So, and then you've got that border with a lot of people going back and forth for both trade and, and as well, like you know, they've got a huge manufacturing base on the other side of that border. So the city, I think, is attracting a lot of this investment. They realize that 
they need to invest. So they recently built, as you said rightly, that they put in this new fiber network to the home. And that creates, creates a great baseline. That backhaul connectivity now allows them to take advantage of 5G. Because a lot of people claim to have 5G, but it's pseudo 5G, right? So this is an advantage. And then the, the, the city is visionary, visionary in that. What they're saying is like, we've got all this network investment, now how do we drive the ROI? Wireless is a key complementary technology on top of that to bring a connected city. We bring in smart world platforms. So if you're thinking from a citizen's point of view, they can give them better roads, repair the roads so those potholes get, potholes get fixed. You know, that's a huge issue. I mean, driving a nice car, truck, it's damaged, now you're responsible. So if we can do computer vision to detect those and efficiently repair versus the standard model, somebody phones it in, you know, goes in, then the city can be predictive, drive more operational efficiency. Faster response time from first responders, from police, so they're aware of the situation, what's happening before um, you know, they, they show up. And optimizing their parks and facilities from usage, where are you getting the most usage, et cetera. And a real simple one you know, is traffic engineering. How do you bring uh, optimized traffic on legacy technology, like you've got legacy wires, but uh, leg legacy traffic lights, not the new modern ones, but how can we take computer vision, augment them, and optimize those? So if you can save citizens time, that's a huge value because that's their customer. And it takes a partnership, it takes all of Nokia, NTT, our applications and solutions, and we want to be, and we are the trusted partner of the city. We're not there always to sell, we're there to brainstorm, spend time, what are they trying to drive and drive outcomes, and that's, you know, I'll turn it over to Jeff, kind of what, what he thinks, but, you know, we see a massive opportunity. I think that that's why this, uh, ecosystem of partnerships is, is so important to make sure that you bring in the applications, the devices, the connectivity, et cetera. So, of course, we have the connectivity part. We talked about the different devices. You mentioned computer vision, others such as optical, audio, motion, et cetera. So then they're collecting all this data, right? So now that's great, but you have to do something with all this data or what's the point? So then we need to take all this data back, right? And that's where the smart solutions that uh, NTT provides, NTT data provides, is, is very critical. So now we can use this uh, real-time analytics and, and AI and ML to process all this data to, to try and then determine where the problem is or maybe even predict where the problem uh, may be coming in the future or be coming from and then then you can react more more quickly right and so um, in this phase one for the city of Brownsville they're targeting kind of this downtown core area which is uh, including four city parks as well as the uh, public's works yard and uh, the the airport too and you mentioned some of the, the use cases already but um, some that kind of stick out to mind in my mind um, of course the, the general connectivity but then uh, things like illegal dumping and having cameras and, and being able to control that. And if you think about the environmental impacts that that, that can have from a positive perspective. Um, then also crowd monitoring, crowd control, as you mentioned, in the parks and other areas. Um, that That's super, uh, super exciting, I think, in a way, to, to see how that's utilized. And, and then there's other things like uh, license plate recognition. Um, when you think about uh, vehicle theft, you think about helping first responders, law enforcement, who's near and dear to my heart, being a former police officer, be able to solve crimes, right? And, and more than just locating vehicles. And then vehicle classification, I think, is, is something else that's used, for for example, at airports, at entry points, right? That, that is super important. So really a wide spectrum there. And I think it's just a great example that once you make the investment to have the connectivity, then these use cases can come. And then it's going to drive and foster innovation Right, um, and I think that that will then propagate outside of the city of Brownsville into other cities as well yeah. because they can learn from, from things that, that Brownsville has done. But it's also important though to understand that each of the verticals are quite a bit different. Yeah. And that, that's why we continue to, to partner together to look across all those verticals and make sure that we're um, bringing the innovation that's necessary for them to, to meet their needs. And, and in the case of the city of Brownsville, it's not just the use cases we mentioned and the direct impacts, but if you also think about the positive economic impact that this will also have, um, because uh, the more connected, the smarter the city, the likely and the safer the city, 
uh, more businesses are going to be attracted to the city, which means more jobs, right? And so then it's also about creating this sustainable growth um, as well and, and, and having that, um, you know, really at the forefront of, of the plan here. So, yeah, I think it, it's super exciting and we're going to continue to, to, to partner together. And it's an important question because it's not just about the city of Brownsville. As, as we mentioned here, we're, we're, we're doing other things and, and I think things will be replicated. Yeah. And, and it's just, I like to say, one goes to two to four yeah. to, to eight. And, yeah, you know. exactly. And a lot of our clients, they want global solutions. And, you know, working across, we're working very closely with, with Nokia and APAC as well. You know, we're, and, and they've got, we've got strong relations, strong brand recognition across NTT, Nokia, both across, you know, there's going to be new ways of entering the market in each country. So I think that is really what we're looking for and having that ecosystem is so critical. We want to be able to pick and choose, but the solution has to be baseline for us, still has to be CIO friendly. It has to be priced right for that market and it's something we can manage and operate and run. Well, this has been, uh, you know, really interesting. I think whether it's uh, airports or cities or, or any other industry, the desire for digital transformation is there. And as you said, it's just about making it uh, consumable mm -hmm. for the for the end user. So, uh, mm -hmm. really exciting to hear what Nokia and NTT are doing here. Thanks for taking the time to uh, tell us about it. Thank hey, you. thank you very much. Appreciate it.